Hello, hello, hello. Oh, it's a happy day. Hello, hello. We got some good stuff for you today. Uh, and there's Mark. Hello, Mark. Brother Mark, good to see you. And we got third in line, actually second in line. All right. Good job. Good job. And Annie Luhu and Paul Zeke and nice and Paige Denise. Hello. She got that right. I did. I did. I did it right. Good, good. Grover Hunter. Good to see you. My favorite uncle's name is Grover. Science Nerd. Good to see you as well. Tiffany Wood. Osboy. Good morning. Over there in Australia. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hello, Miss Tiffany. It's good to see you all here. This is wonderful. Hello, hello. Yeah, we got Arizona Raven in the house. Uh, Scott's in the house. Jetty Master in the house as well. Much blessings. Yes, much blessings. Great to see you guys. There's Karen Lynn. And I can't read that. Listen Vision, I think. Listen for Vision. Uh -huh. Boy, I gotta check your eyes. I know, right? If I could read it and you can't. Yeah, that's bad. It is bad. <laughs> Renee Perry. Christine MacArthur. Hello over there in NZ. Yay! I'm so glad you could make it, Miss Christine. I hope everything's well at the office. Neil from Jersey in the UK. UFO to know. Yo. That's cute. It's good to see everybody. So yeah, there's there's so much that's been I think missed by the public because of everything that's going on, obviously, with the CV crisis, with the protests, with the chaos that we see going on, earth changes that, you know, we miss a lot that actually is significant. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we have some special astrological alignments coming up, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know that they're very important. And we want to have ourselves in a good place when these alignments pass through. Um, a lot of these uh, vibrations that come through us, they make changes to our bodies. And it's really important we're in like a receptive, happy state. Most definitely. So uh, we see Shotgun Sus saying lmao harry reed earth is flat don't trust them yeah you shouldn't trust politicians how could you trust politicians but you know don't base your assumption on the earth being flat on you know constantine either because he was a politician right. he was a politician that executed his wife and son yeah. in order to keep his power do you trust him right. do you really true. trust anything that he put together mm -hmm. so you gotta look deeper of course crystal core art Good to see you, Paul Zink. Star. Rose War. Hi, Queen Star. Hello, you guys. Good to see you. Yeah, that's why you don't trust anything. And you, you go and look at all the evidence from all over. And as Buddha said, judge it with both your mind and also your heart and then make your decision. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about here. Um, a real lot to talk about. And we're looking at Harry Reid. Is he going to be beamed up? Uh, is he? Is he going to get his own personal rapture going? I don't know, man. Anybody in the Senate, especially a long-term senator. Yeah. But, you know, this is one of those things that people probably missed. And it's not just Harry Reid. I mean, we could go on down the line of people that have come out of politics and admitted. And you don't have to just look at politicians. Look in history. Look at all the wood cuttings we've seen of UFOs. Um, I'm going to start at the back. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Where was I? Yeah. I mean, we're like, look at all the Vedic, the Indian texts talking about the Vimanas, the aircraft in the sky. You have all sorts of um, Christian artwork showing like there's the Annunciation with Ar Archangel Gabriel. I've talked about this and shown this a million times. Shows a UFO beating down a, a beam of light right into the crown chakra of the Virgin Mary. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's a laugh if you don't put these things together. You know, all the talk of the wars of the gods flying around in the sky. And it's not just, you know, from one tradition. It's all traditions around the globe. So let's go down to Peru and just talk about the Inca 
uh, the Nazca lines that are down there that can only be viewed from above. We have detailed descriptions of flying ships, not just uh, from the Vedic tradition, not just from India, but also Mesoamerica as well. So, you know, if you put all the evidence together, you don't got to be a brain surgeon. Um, however, if you can't see it, it's probably because you're just so deeply indoctrinated in one set of beliefs that you don't want your worldview rocked. So you want to and need to hold on to a certain worldview. And as we've said before, like I remember, I think it was third grade or fourth grade. And, you know, my curiosity got the better of me. And we had an old house that we were living in that had like closets inside of closets. So, you know, I had to go poking around and I went poking around a couple of days before Christmas and I found my presents from Santa. Oh I know I was a bad boy, you know, but I wanted to still keep believing that there was a Santa so bad. So I acted surprised and the next couple of years I acted surprised again, even though I knew my parents were Santa. I just didn't want to blow it for them either. Right. right. Is that a good kid or what? That's a pretty good kid. That's wonderful. Um, but it's true, though. I mean, we all have so much of our time, energy, um, finances wrapped up in our our belief system and indoctrination and our education that when it, it's super blatant in your face, no matter how black and white it may be, people have this sad ability to just make a blank screen and pretend that the evidence doesn't exist. Yeah, and that's, again, that's just conditioning, and that's because of comfort, because, you know, some people, they just can't have their world rocked. They can't develop and accept a new paradigm. It has to be what they grew up with, what they were indoctrinated with, and it literally could send some people off the deep end. And that that's why a, a lot of this is, that's partly why, you know, a lot of it hasn't been disclosed because it could send a lot of people into chaos, even more than what we have. If, if you recognize that your entire belief system has been, you know, based on a false vision of reality. But then what is reality? That came up too in uh, today's earlier um, video. And it's all either subjective reality or objective reality. Which is it? Is it subjective? Are we each seeing our own reality? Or is there one concrete reality? So that's another big question. Um, but from the Eastern traditions and from the mystery school traditions, those that were you know, hidden in the West, it's subjective. Because the, the viewer is creating the reality. The observer, we know this from quantum physics as well. So Harry Reid, the aliens are real, and we need to be looking at these UFOs. Really interesting. There's a movie coming out. Well, it's al already out, and I think you can watch it on, or actually you could buy it on Amazon. I haven't seen where you could actually um, rent it, but it's called The Phenomenon, and it gets into talking to not just Harry Reid, but a lot of other public officials about the reality of UFOs. Of course, the, the Navy has come right out and said, you know, some of these things aren't ours. And the ones that they are talking about, I really think might be theirs in, in reality, um, because there are declassified documents about anti-gravity and all sorts of other interesting technologies that they haven't shown us. Um, but in this movie, they talk about the fact that just like what we've gotten from a lot of channeled messages, that the aliens, the ETs, you know, again, we could, there's extraterrestrials, meaning they simply don't come from Earth, and there's interdimensionals that may come from Earth, but they might come from a 4 or 5D version of Earth. And then, all, of course, we have the real strong possibility that there's time travel as well, because, you know, time and space are just basically something that is in our reality because we inhabit these bodies even though we are not these bodies we inhabit these bodies so we have a limited perspe uh, perspective on reality while we're in these bodies unless we do a lot of deep work uh, go deep in med meditation and are able to escape the body transcend the body then all of a sudden we have a vision of reality that is different and perhaps a lot more accurate than what we're going through you can also reach this through activation of things like DMT uh, of which 
that can be done again through meditation. Uh, somebody had said you should check out Santos Bonacci, and so we, we I've checked him out for years and years, and uh, agree with him on many things. And he talks all about, um, well, the pineal gland consciousness. You know, what's the real meaning behind Christ and christened? The fact that it has to do with the cranial sacral fluid, has to do with kundalini activation and waking up the third eye so that we can experience a version of reality like Christ experienced. And, you know, my personal opinion, it's more about Christ consciousness than a uh, historical personage. You know, it's more about understanding that. So in this, we also have... Uh, not just Harry Reid, but other people talking about uh, things like what the UFOs can do. Obviously, they can outmaneuver us. Obviously, they have way more technology. Interesting, too, that they talked about them going over military bases and deactivating nukes. And we've talked about that as well. Will they, would the higher-ups, would these higher beings allow a complete nuclear war? And a lot of channeled information says that would not happen. And Cindy's also got that there's a certain line that they crossed and then there can be intervention. Yes, there absolutely can be. What they don't want to do is they don't want to screw with our free will. <clears throat> we did come here to for a purpose. We have um, each one of us is on um, our own mission and they don't want to kind of they don't want to rock that boat but they do want to give us enough information to help humanity rise up because a lot of us did come back to help raise the vibration of earth so we can ascend earth can ascend and it all gets very confusing and convoluted but the whole point is is that there's far more besides just what we see in our bodies and our bodies pick up a lot of information on the outside of it. that was the show earlier today about how all the information that comes into us you know is just our inner it's right outside of our body and we have like these little antennas that pick up this information these little electrical signals that pick up the information then then our body or brain reacts and responds to said information and that's why traumas you know can remain out in the energy field and and you know it's just really good to have a good working energy field and aura and have a lot of these traumas smoothed out or you could receive the information incorrectly Exactly. So, you know, it's interesting, like, you know, and again, I'm not a big Harry Reid fan. I'm not really a fan of any of the politicians, because when you get to the top, in my opinion, you've kind of sold out as um, one of our good family members there. Uh, Kim, Kim Rizzo was talking about um, just the, the whole sale destruction of the planet. Well, you know, it's because the system. The system's not planet friendly. It, it's really a system. If you look at it, it's almost as if those that are running this planet are not from here. Just look at it because they are destroying it. They just look at it like it's a resource. And, you know, if it gets used up and destroyed, eh, then we'll just go on. We'll find another resource. So when you look at it from that point of view, it makes sense as well. Um, and, you know, Harry Reid did say that if you think we're the only species in the universe, that's kind of short-sighted. That's hugely short-sighted. But that's obvious, too, as... You know, there's just so many different planets out there, different, you know, star systems as well. And then we still get people saying space isn't real, the Earth is flat. Well, the Earth is flat in a sense. Uh, and again, you could look at it going into science uh, because now there's so many scientists out there that say, yeah, we're looking at a holographic version of reality, uh, which is a projection from a second density. Um, like a 2D projection. 2, uh, 2D is more like the, uh, the reality as opposed to what we're looking at here. It's a holographic universe, in other words, which is projected from a different reality. So in that sense, you could say, well, maybe it is flat in that sense. But in this holograph, it's round or oval, you know. Um, and so are uh, everything else that we see out there, the suns and the other planets. Again, that's just wanting to make a particular reality um, stay safe and comfortable for a, a certain person that is of a particular mindset because of conditioning and, and really religious conditioning and, and indoctrination. 
And as you see here, the people deserve to be informed about UFOs. All these things are coming out now, not because they want it to come out, because they have no choice. Right. They're being forced because we are in different times now. And we are rising up. So we are rising up in frequency. So, yeah, I was thinking about making a whole video on this, the fact that like with the Australian Aboriginal people, they say we are returning to dream time. So what's dream time? Well, we could view it as kind of 4G, 4D, sort of. It's one notch up from where we are when we're totally awake and conscious in these bodies, more like a dream state. Well, if we learn how to lucid dream, then we could even more control our reality. So right now, that's the key for us, is to recognize uh, the, well, self-realization, self just like we were talking about in the earlier video. Really realize where the self is. The self is... Well, it's using a body. It's not limited to the body. You know, we are the consciousness. We, we have a vehicle. And, and that's the reality. And we are going up in consciousness. So we're getting closer to the realms where the more benevolent beings are. And we're going to be able to have more interactions. Like all these fairy tales about gnomes and sprites and elves and magical beings and things that people apparently really believe they saw in ages past, in ages where we weren't in the Kali Yuga, and perhaps in ages where we didn't have fluoridated water, we didn't have a closed mind, and we were just able to perceive things better. Mm -hmm. We were, and we were taught from a very small age that there is a spirit world, and we're extremely connected to it. And we were even taught how to connect to the spirit world through the ether through certain little alchemies or rituals and yeah I taught that from a very very young age and and now from a very very young age like almost when we're walking we're we're sent to school and we're we're just taught about things on the outside of us so you know I I do believe that they're doing the right thing by doing this slow drip um <sighs> slow drip information about what's really out there because I think it would really harm a lot of souls if they were to find out the reality of things too quickly that can be highly traumatizing and then we have the masses that are not only are already having a hard time but then are highly traumatized I think that would be just too much of a jolt on the earth herself because she's a being too she feels what we feel we feel what she feels so I think they're doing this slow drip thing appropriately. That's me. So I think it's also interesting that, as I've said so many times, they want us to take a, a hard stance on the side and you know be on one side of the fence or the other. And as we've said before, it's not always the case. You know, really, uh, there's it's not either or, but it's all of the above so often. And when we look at, like, Genesis 6, which is so famous. And so, you know, we'll look at, start at Genesis 6, 3. The sons of God, or the sons of the gods, saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took wives, whomever they choose. And so the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days shall be 120 years. So... If you look at it just from that point of view, you got a certain, you know, um, perspective. But then if you study the Sumerian tells and, you know, you read that they viewed reality as mankind was created to be serv servants for the gods. And when we read all of them and we discover that at one time, you know, Anu was offering to bring us to actually be up at the level of the gods and Enki who had saved man from the Enlil induced flood yet he didn't allow man to get outside of his control grid because he tricked man into not accepting um, it really makes you wonder and it, and it gives different perspective on this and, and again remember uh, you know the Bible is, is it's Reader's Digest if you guys remember Reader's Digest it's a condensed thing uh, there's far more scriptures that weren't included than were included. And again, it was put together starting uh, with Constantine, who was the Roman Empire. You know, he was the emperor of Rome. And in his time period, 
in, he was um, he well he formed the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D. The barbarians were at the gates, you know. So Rome was kind of falling. Uh, we are falling pretty fast now too, as we can see. And so he had to do something to keep it together. And meanwhile, Christianity was spreading like wildfire, and there were so many different Christian sects. Some believe Jesus was God. Others believe Jesus was, well, the Son of God, a little bit below God. Others believe Jesus was just a prophet, as uh, the Jews and the Muslims do. And it is curious that there's a legend in uh, India of St. Issa that came in that time frame to India and learned under different yogis. And then when we look at Islam, they their name for Jesus is Issa, Issa too. So that's kind of curious. Uh, then we look at the second chromosome and we say, okay, so is this what that's talking about? My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days shall be 120 years. So is that little genetic splicing going on there? And no more do we have people like Methuselah and such living 969 years. Interestingly enough, there's legends all around the globe of people living a thousand years. And when we look to the Vedic tradition, when we are in uh, like the Dwapara Yuga, for instance, really any but the Kali, we live much, much longer lives, much longer lives. Totally different. So when you start looking at it like that, then, then you see that there's a bigger picture here. The Nephilim were on earth in those days. And of course, people view those as being fallen angels. And again, angels, the Greek original word means messenger. Simply that, messenger. Doesn't mean that there aren't angelic beings, which are part of the Davic realm. Everything from uh, you know earth elementals all the way up to the devas themselves, which are like angelic beings, what we envision angelic beings. So it doesn't mean that there's not angels. Yes, there's angels, and there's also those that are the messengers of the gods who we could also just view as extraterrestrial beings, perhaps some interdimensional extraterrestrials. And then we have other type of beings which are really purely interdimensional to us and cannot really take a solid physical form or sometimes can manifest one briefly and you know i've seen that in person as uh december of 2017 i awoke after i felt a strange feeling in my abdomen like something energetic went into it and saw about an eight to nine foot tall gray alien hovering over me who immediately looked away from me and it was like he went into a meditative state and slowly his body started to, well, it looked like beam me up Scotty. You know how that energy pattern starts to develop and then he's gone. But it took him like 90 seconds and he, I could feel his anxiousness because I was able to see him and he didn't expect me to be able to see him and be able to keep seeing him as he was trying to get his ass out of there. So very curious. And we've seen that being, it's still, he's still assigned to watch us. And that is actually the same being that often comes in and screws with the microphone and plays with the computers. Um, so you, the, there are there is the reality of interdimensional beings. Now, would I call him a, a demon? No, I, I think he's a tall gray alien. You know, I mean, is he demonic? Well, what is demonic? It, yeah, he's taking orders. Well, what what is demonic? Something negative to humans? Well, yeah, he's not being positive to me, that's for sure. Um, but then I've seen also dark entities that look like black holes with glowing red eyes. Those, I would say, are more demonic. Shadow people, pure black shadow people as well with this dark, dark vibe. Okay, that to me is more of a demon. Um, but this is all interesting because as far as the Nephilim and the giants, there was many of them. You know, there was the Anakim and there was the Raphaim. You know, there's so many different types of, of giants that were out there. They weren't all the red-headed cannibalistic ones, and that word we got to be careful with. Um, although those were part of them. Those were definitely part. So the Nephilim were on earth in those days and afterward as well, when the sons of God, or the sons of the gods, had relations with the daughters of men, and they bore them children who became mighty men of old, men of renown. So that doesn't actually sound bad. It, you know, it sounds more like we're talking about beings like Hercules, some that we would call perhaps demigods. 
You know, so there's a different beings that we're talking about here. And then it goes into why the flood came. Because the Lord, or maybe we should put Enlil, saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth. Well, maybe we should say saw that man had the potential to realize his situation and that his inclinations of thoughts in his heart were altogether evil all the time. Do you think so? I don't think humans are like that altogether all the time. I think that's putting down a race. And given a reason to go ahead and commit genocide and try to wipe out an entire people. So really what they're saying is, hmm, man has the capacity to wake up and realize he's like us and that we're using them as a slave race. They're getting too smart. Their technology is getting too high. It's time to call the population. That's really what it's saying here. You know, and so Enlil regretted that he made man on earth and was grieved in his heart because man was a pain in the ass to Enlil. And so one of those mighty men of renown is Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh here, you see, that's not a putty tat, that's a lion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, I think it's funny, it kind of cracks me up now whenever I see him, he's like holding this lion like it's his teddy bear or something, like squeezing it, like, I don't know, you know, I don't know what to think about that. He's a very big man, it does show that for sure, he's very powerful, and um, I, you know, I do believe that the spirits of these beings definitely are on the earth and I wouldn't be too surprised if there weren't some that are like physically on the earth too it's just it's so hard to say because really the only thing that we know is what the information that they feed us and we don't know how true that is we have to kind of use our guts and use our use our gut and use our intuition and our imagination and just ask ourselves you know does this sound right does this feel right and, you know, move through life and the things that they give us to learn, move through it with your own understanding as best as you can. So again, it's great to cross-reference and check out different stories. Now, so Gilgamesh, the fifth ruler of the first post diluvian dynasty of Uruk, Great builder of temples and cities, restored Uruk after the flood. Known as the great judge, prayers addressed to him. He was two-thirds God, one-third human being. His mother was a goddess, his father a mortal king of Uruk. So interesting, because there is your interbreeding going on. But interbreeding with who exactly? You know, interbreeding with what exactly? Obviously, they were able, whoever these beings were, to have physical bodies. And it, not simply a case of possession, but actual physical bodies. So here we see Gilgamesh tomb, believe found. Now, I've said before too, because I have friends that have actually, you know, been over there, and, and some of you may have been over there in Iraq and also in Afghanistan. There's a reason why these wars are happening over there. It is you know, somewhat for resources, or perhaps that's more of a better excuse for the real reason, which is you know, controlling certain areas. Some people believe there's stargates in these areas, most definitely eradicating any sort of clues to give us a real vision of what the true history of the past was. And so archaeologists in Iraq believe they may have found the lost tomb of King Gilgamesh, subject of the oldest book in history. 2,500 years before the birth of Christ, right? This is this way precedes anything biblical. And again, if you want to go to the first um, complete Jewish handwritten uh, Torah, you're talking like 900 CE, CE, you know, for a complete copy. So, you know, this is so much, mu much older. Interesting, too, this is two years after 9-1-1, not even quite two years after. German-led expeditions discovered what it thought to be the entire city of Uruk. And, you know, there is word out there that perhaps they did discover Gilgamesh's tomb. Perhaps they do have his DNA. Perhaps they took it uh, in order to keep anybody from ever finding it and getting real clues as to what happened. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that they've done to keep the information covered up, keep it hidden, keep it so that we don't really find out the truth about our reality. You know, if it would be a problem for the elites and, and 
the handlers if we knew where we're from because then we would have a better idea about where we're going. We would be able to understand our abilities and we all have them and they are all coming online and right now it's a very confusing time and they've done a really good job at traumatizing a lot of people so that when our abilities do come online it looks more like a um, a case of a mental illness and to lock them up or something something like this you know because they really can't afford for us to really really learn how special we truly truly are as you can see this is u.s department of state freedom of information act and you know i, I was going to make i was all set to make a video on this yesterday and i thought nah and then you know sometimes when i say nah you know it there's a reason and so just because this video and what we're talking about here i think is a lot more complete than what i was going to give you guys yesterday um if you look over here and this is a tweet from michael sala who many of you guys are probably familiar with his work he's done a lot and uncovering a lot of this the natra synagar made a f OIA, so a Freedom of Information Act request, to the State Department December 2018 for Resurrection Chamber of Gilgamesh. Interesting that the state filed it in the Clinton email collection. Yeah, so this is the virtual reading room, and when you click on this, it opens up uh, basically Hillary Clinton's emails again, and we know there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in there. How about Edward Snowden? Oh, my gosh. You know, Edward Snowden came out and, and he talked about this. Why do people not listen to that? You know, because obviously, look at the whole Snowden case. I mean, just like, um, oh, I'm going to forget the, uh, the gentleman from the UK that's been locked up forever now. Um, oh, oh, oh. He's been I under. I can't believe I can't forget his name too. Does somebody know. Oh, you guys, you guys the know. White beard, the guy with the white hair, white beard. Yeah, you, you know, know this is what happens to people that leak real information okay. on a high, high level. Um, so yeah, it, there was a Hillary Clinton email talking about this. You know, again, the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh. You know, the elite know mm -hmm. at that level. The Clintons know. The Bushes know. Obama knows. Uh, I, I do think Trump knows too. Assange. 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 Yeah, Julian Assange. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Mushishi. Thank you, Mushishi. So, yeah, I mean, these guys, these people get really hammered. Hammered, you know? I, I feel really bad for Assange. Mm -hmm. and, and for Snowden too, because what was Snowden doing? He was trying to protect the people. He really was just trying to let us know what's going on. Well, one of them, you know, he talked about this. He said he talked about the reality of ETs and interdimensionals. You guys out there, some of you might be fans of the old Art Bell, Coast to Coast. You remember when that guy called in from Area 51 all panicked and he's saying, what well, you think are extraterrestrials? They're really interdimensional beings. Interdimensional. Um, there's both. I, there's both out there. There is definitely both, you know, and we pick up a lot of signals that we might not understand or might not know how to read, but I do believe that they do kind of watch us in many ways, in many different forms. You know, it is really important to the elites to keep humans kind of under control. And it seems like if you get too boisterous about the truth or if you touch on the truth a little too close, something is going to happen to you. It's it's like these little punishments that they like to like to kind of shell out to people if you know they're just too close to the truth it's not very nice what they do yeah it, it's pretty wild and uh, I saw a comment out there that Thor was a redhead as well yeah you know and these are the type of things that yeah, it just get me uh, enthralled and looking into it like the Aesir their battles against the Vanir mm -hmm the uh, Asuras and the Devas fighting. Uh, it's its just pretty wild stuff. As I was sharing with you guys before, I was reading about Hanuman and was still doing more reading last night too. Um, and it's interesting because, again, a lot of things are there just to give us parables, allegories, easier ways of understanding things. So why is Hanuman an ape man and yet a demigod right because he is a demigod um it's it's i think that it's showing us that what we could even perceive as being 
lower than lowest human potential, thinking that apes are lower than humans in their you know, cognitive abilities and perhaps other abilities as well, but that we could jump all the way up to demigod, you know, status in one lifetime. It all, it's all about self-realization, understanding, going within. You know, that is the key. And there's reasons why they don't want us going within. Look, look at the typical life in the Western world. It's hectic. You know, you're just paying bills. We have dear friends that are going through such hard financial times that just don't know what to do. And so, you know, they, they, they work their butts off and they're just trying to make it, you know, make ends meet. But we get ourselves caught up with uh, keeping up with the, with the Joneses and everything like that. And, you know, in normal times before this whole lockdown scenario, so many people were just, you know, all about just work, work, work. And now, you know, a lot of people don't have work. So the blessing is they have the time maybe to go within if we could shut out the world a little bit and the noise of the world, um, which does take a lot of work and effort. But that's the key is going within. And it's it's fascinating to see what we really could be. So the myth of Gilgamesh, her- hero king of Mesopotamia. And you see, so he's Gilgamesh of Uruk. And his epithet is he who saw the deep. That's interesting. He who saw the deep. Now, do you think that might have any reference to going within? You know, and again, you know, who are these beings? You know, these demigods, who are they really? Yeah, you know, and they don't teach us here in the Western world. They they don't teach us about any of these beings. In fact, they tell us to be afraid of these beings and don't study them. But I do believe a lot of people have... Um, DNA memory, which would, if they were to read some of these books and some of these stories might actually activate some memory. Because when you do look at something like that and you get curious about it and you're really interested and really enthralled, that could be your DNA just knocking at you saying, hey, this is familiar. This is familiar. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me a little bit closer. And you might come upon some self-realizations, which are, which are just golden if you can get them when you get them. They're wonderful. And, you know, this one goes into describe them a little bit. And the most common form of the story, and right there you see there's more than one form of the story. And it's the same thing what I was reading last night, you know, going into some of the different Vedic stories. There's more than one version out there. So and it's the same thing in, in when you go into the Bible, too. As we talked about, you know, the oldest book, oldest copy that we have of the book of John has over 3,000 edits. The Gospel of John. 3,000 edits. And, you know, so there again, you know, we're, we're getting versions. But, you know, use, take what you will, and then again, meditate on it and see what comes to you. So in the most common form, he's a prince, and he's the son of a king and of a goddess. Interesting as well. Now, there was a video we did uh, talking about the reality of interdimensional beings. So you wonder, okay, is this a goddess in the sense that she comes from somewhere out in the Pleiades? And really she's a 3D or a a Pleiadian being that's able to be fully physical? Or is she a goddess in a different sense? Is she just a higher dimensional being? And maybe his vibrations were high enough that they could kind of interact and connect. Now there's, there's legends of humans being taken into the fairy realm into you know maybe a higher density sometimes they don't come back for generations and everybody's dead or 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 you know they come back they they might have left when they were 20 they come back they're still 20 everybody around them that was 20 is now 80 there's like that time thing and then we see missing time in the ufo phenomenon too as well which is really really interesting so is she really when you get down to she's a goddess you know it, it's it's fascinating we know about royal blood and how they want to inbreed all the time to keep the purity and we've talked about the Ijiji and the fact that you know those cone-headed beings that we see perhaps they came from mars before mars was toasted and they came to earth 
And, you know, perhaps that has something to do with the Atlantean connection and the Illuminati connection as well. So he was a wild youth at the onset during the epic tale of Gilgamesh, pursues a heroic quest for fame and immortality, and becomes a man with an enormous capacity for friendship, endurance, and adventure. Along the way, he also experiences great joy and sorrow, as well as strength and weakness. I find it fascinating, too, that when we look at the mythologies, it doesn't matter what tradition you're in, all the gods and goddesses have human emotions. Mm -hmm. Human emotions. Human flaws. Strong emotions, too. And, you know, I think as much as when they write about themselves and their purity and how perfect they are, I think they're more human than human, really. I think there's more flaws than we realize. And, <clears throat> of course, we do need <clears throat> people to look up to. We do need um, people to admire and people to kind of walk in their footsteps. But I, I really believe that there was a lot of emotion, a lot of trauma, a lot of falses, a lot of things wrong with them that didn't really get written down. So Gilgamesh goes off, even though he's two-thirds God, one-third human, he goes off in search of immortality. And then eventually he gives up on this quest and returns to Uruk. When he finally dies, he becomes the god of the underworld, a perfect king and judge of all the dead, who sees and knows all. And that looks like one of those man purses those guys are always carrying, does it not? Yep. And what are the snakes? Is that like DNA? What is that? Yeah, look, there's two snakes, mm -hmm. and he's battling with them, holding them by the neck. Yep. So is it is it all really you know relative to the DNA as well? It's all just very interesting to see. But again, life goes on because even though he dies, he, he left that physical body. Then he becomes the god of the underworld. Yeah. So, you know, there's just a lot of things that we just don't know. And it's really nice once you are able to break open your belief system <clears throat> and understand that it's OK to look outside the Bible. It's OK to look into other things, look into tarot, look into astrology. Oh, thank you, Miss Susan Donahue. Dear Michael and Cindy, with many thanks and much love, if I were a betting woman, my money would be on Heart of Humanity. Thank you so much, Susan Donahue. We so appreciate you. We really, really do. I just want to send out a huge, big hug to Susan Donahue. We really appreciate your support, your love, all of your positive positivity, and it's just undying and everlasting, and I just really want to say thank you. So outside the four walls with Yahuwah says the giants were not human. Well, you know, you, you have to have certain DNA characteristics to interbreed. Yeah. You have to be part of the same, you know, the bigger species. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens did breed together. Same thing with Denisovans. And uh, also says that I guess I'm twisting scripture. Well, I think it's untwisting the twisted version right. that exactly. that has been given to the mainstream to keep you in a lockdown frame of mind where you're afraid to actually go and look mm -hmm. and compare stories from around the world and try to get a bigger picture. No, everything else, anything else that I don't believe in must be of Satan. You know, that th that is really twisted and that's really yeah. closed minded. But look at why it was done, because it keeps us divided. And so what do we have going on? We've had religious wars going on all over the place. And we see that it, Christianity, for instance, was used as an excuse to come over and steal the riches, you know, of the natives of, of the both North and South America, because after all, they don't have a soul, according to, you know, some people's beliefs. And that, you know, baptizing them, even if they ended up, you know, boiling alive in oil or something would still, you know, save them or it would benefit mm -hmm. them when mm -hmm. we could go and we could look at, um, and thank you so much, Robert Johnson. We appreciate your support. We could go and look at the story of Jericho and, you know, going ahead and blowing down the, the walls and killing every single man, woman, and child, but put the gold and the silver in the storehouse of God. You know, so again, justification. And then there are those that believe that every inhabitant of Canaan uh, were of these Nephilim. And so that was the justification for killing them all because they were all redheaded cannibal giants. 
And I don't think that's the case because we, we know of the Philistines, we know of uh, the Phoenicians, we know of so many different people that we actually have skeletal remains of that they're not giants. You know, they're uh, people of normal stature that we know we're living in those areas. There's remnants of, of dwellings, towns, and cities that are there as well. So, you know, that's not really the case. I think there's a lot of justification that is used from people that believe they have the one and only true religion and everything else is just doctrine of demons. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, you know, they've been, those religious fundamentalist ideals are what make people go off and do the crusades, do the inquisition, burn witches at the stake and persecute others of different beliefs. As Albert Pike had said, you know, there's going to be three world wars back in 1871. And he talked about the necessity of bringing Israel back into being after it it was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. And it wasn't resurrected uh, until modern times, thanks to a Rothschild Mm -hmm. and the Balfour Declaration. So there we see who's really bringing the Jews back to Israel. Is it God? Is it the prime creator, the creator of the entire universe? No, it's not the creator of the entire universe. It could be one of the gods, quote unquote, one of the Anunnaki, uh, or a group of Anunnaki, whatever we want to term them, or we could say greys and reptilians, or hybrids, uh, using the Illuminati or the UGG, who are their spokespeople out here on Earth, uh, i.e. the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, um, you know, the Vatican, the Black Pope, the Great Pope, all that, the Jesuits, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, to bring about their will on Earth as Cindy's getting energetically attacked right now. So we're probably going to have to cut it short pretty soon. Um, but it's time to get rid of the divisive thinking and time to recognize that people have been played and pitted against each other to just basically do the will of those in power. So when we look at Greek mythology, here's a list of demigods from all sorts of different philosophies. There's tons of them. Achilles, you guys remember Achilles, Uh, Aeneas. There's so many different ones out there in Dionysus. And it's interesting when you look at Dionysus, especially. And I've gone into that on other videos as well. Then you have Roman mythology, Philippine mythology, Manipuri mythology, Hindu mythology, the list of demigods goes on and on and on. Norse mythology, Celtic mythology, as well as so many others. This is just, you know, it's it's a universal myth, so there must be some truth there. So guys, Cindy's not feeling too good right now. As This this is what happens a lot of times. They come through um, and will kind of attack her. And thank you, Agnita. We appreciate you so much. But, you know, keep your minds open and keep your hearts 